Okay, welcome to GrowthGen's Member Spotlight, and I'm your host, Eyob Yesus, the founder of GrowthGen. So at GrowthGen, we know that you don't work to live. If you did, you wouldn't be running your own business. You don't live to work either. You want more. Family, friends, dreams, personal growth, and adventure. You work and live. But the business owner's life, as we know it, doesn't fit into neat separate little boxes. Work and home, family and deadlines, everything is connected. Everything changes constantly. There is no magical work-life balance to achieve. Instead, you have to roll with the ebb and flow with the daily demands, keep your eyes on the long-term goals, and maybe even have some fun along the way. And we're here to talk about it because it's all about that working on your life and your business. That's what GrowthGen is all about. We're a small business community that empowers small business owners to work through those challenges and opportunities and succeed and grow in life and in business. So today, uh, I am joined by Leanne Shelton, one of our awesome members. Super, super excited to find out about her um, about her business. And let's delve straight into it. Uh, Leanne is from um, uh, Right Time Marketing, and uh, she'll tell us a little bit more about herself. Leanne, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Leo. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, super excited to have you on board. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Uh, so about me, I live in Sydney's Hills District uh, with my husband and two daughters. Uh, and I started my business with a whole, you know, wanting that flexibility around my young family. When my eldest was, I think, nine months old, I started the business. And, you know, I did get a contract that kind of helped me, you know, get me started, which was great. And I kind of went to this world. I've always been a writer since I was a kid, loved it. And I always thought though, you either become an author or, or a journalist. Mm. Um, and so over the years, doing lots of work experience and, um, and mingling with some business owners, I actually started my business with the intention of doing e-newsletters. Um, but then I, I learned that website copy and article writing was a bit more where people were at. And I'm like, great, well, I'm a freelance journalist. I would love to get into that space. I learned about SEO, search engine optimization. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's going. It's coming up to nine years ago that I started the business. Wow. And um, yeah, and basically it's turned more, yeah, so website copy and articles are, you know, one of the key things that we do. And yeah, it's been weeks. It's not just me anymore. It, I'm now growing a team of subcontractors for all Australian uh, copywriters and I call most of them senior level because I've met them through copywriting groups that most of them have their own businesses. And yeah, and I'm really, really loving it. But what I've also found in recent years, I mean, about four or five years ago, I started doing training okay. and absolutely love that side of it as well. So there's, I can't say it's a choose your own adventure. Uh, you mm -hmm. can either get asked to write the content for you, or I can teach you on how to, you know, get across all these different platforms yeah, podcasts, webinars, LinkedIn, um, uh, yeah, I've yeah, done webinars and webinars. Um, and yeah, and, and most recently I've moved into the chat GPT space because I've had to as a copywriter. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I, my focus now is for the training and then helping more with the editing to just show people the the human is still required with this AI. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, we'll definitely delve into the AI world a little bit later onwards and find out more about ChatGPT and, uh, wow, <laughs> the changes that are coming up, really. Um, so I guess I really want to find out more about why you started the business. Um, I mean, nine month old is quite a risky <laughs> time to, to start a business. But you know what? I've been through that phase as well. So um, I, I took the same risk. Uh, but I want to find out your story. Why, why did you decide that? Yeah, because I returned from maternity leave uh, to my job and I always said, I want to work part-time initially, but end up being pretty much full-time work crammed into three days. Mm. And I was, I'm a hard worker, but yeah. they kept saying to me, you know, you're not achieving these deadlines. And I'm like, well, because you still haven't given me that much less work. Um, <laughs> they thought they had, but they really had it. And so I was like, I can't handle this anymore. I had to commute to get home. I was getting home seven o'clock at night. It's just, it wasn't working for me. So I spoke to my husband. Like, I've always thought about starting a business. While on maternity leave, I've been doing, yeah, a couple of e-newsletters for sports organizations. And yeah. that's where the idea came from. And then obviously, as I said, it evolved. But 
I also, look, my mum was a, a stay-at-home mum for 10 years and I love that she got involved with the school stuff. She mm. was, you know, very in, involved in all that growing up and I always appreciated that. And so I, I knew if I had my own business, I wouldn't have to worry about asking my boss every time I had to leave early or the Mother's yeah. Day thing or, or Easter hat parade. And I wanted to be really involved with my kids. Yeah, I know and I <laughs> knew and I know. I could never handle being a stay-at-home mom. Like I need to keep my brain stimulated. Um, I, yeah, I went nuts after nine months. So that's why I was like back into work after nine months. Um, so I, I'm like, I want all that glory of, you know, hanging out with my kids when I need to. I will be able to pick them up from school and all that kind of stuff. But also be have that sense of fulfillment and I'm contributing to the household. And uh, yeah, just going forth I always wanted to be I always wanted to be a mum but I never wanted to be just mum like I thought that's just one of the hats I wear and I get a bit frustrated when I do see um it happens a lot of women they lose their sense of self when they start having kids and so I've always been like no I want to be a mum but I also want to be my own self and feel like my skills like my writing skills when I learned that other people especially business owners a lot of them don't have that that skill that just comes naturally to me so I felt like a real win-win if I can make money from something just comes naturally to me yeah. and I'm helping other people it just felt like a no-brainer and so I yeah moved into this world <laughs> what a great conscious effort from your end you know to to think that way um I love that you had that conscious do you know what I mean approach to it uh it's so important to I guess in in moments like that to assess things like that really really well to make sure that that uh nothing uh comes through sorry in one second um yeah but I just uh in saying that though obviously there is a lot of work that goes into business as well <laughs> so we know the Not easy. <laughs> yeah. Not easy we 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 know too well uh how the challenges are especially at growth gen and uh, you know you you we talk about them you know uh, in our boards to make sure that our members work through those details but how i guess what excites you um about your industry i know that you said that writing is in you you know or all, all the way through but how did you obviously there's there's the family side and then there's the, the the business side there must be something that motivates you a bit more than just um th than just uh figuring those things out but what what's what's that smart slight excitement I think it's the opportunity to be creative and try new things I always love going up for new challenges I have people were saying you do all these awesome things and I'm like well I want to keep life exciting and I made that decision of it oh at least almost probably almost two dec decades ago that I'm going to keep every year different. Once I guess I was an adult, I moved out of home and <laughs> I was like, I want to um, just make my life fun. And I think as a kid, I decided I want to write an autobiography. And I was, and I remember saying that to someone, I mean, my dad, he goes, okay, well, what are you going to do in your life? That's going to be <laughs> worth writing in your book. And so I've kind of had that back of mind. I want to live this amazing life. And so I've kind of made myself unemployable. I've And it doesn't feel like the right fit. Uh, look, I can, as a result, also be guilty of shiny object syndrome and jumping on these things a little bit too frequently. Yeah. Uh, and, not, and not necessarily seeing them through because I might give up a bit too easily. But I feel like every day, every week is different. And that keeps me interested and keep moving forward. Uh, so I meet, I go do a lot of networking, as you know. I yeah. always meet new people always learning from them mm. uh, I may not necessarily get clients from networking at all times but I get amazing mentors uh, or referral partners collaboration partners like for example working website designers were a great match and that that's just I'm an extrovert um, those who can't tell and so I <laughs> I just I thrive on that constant opportunity to meet new people do new things and yeah that just just lights me up.
Yeah, love it. Uh, love hearing that. It's so positive and it's so refreshing, uh, Leanne. You should be super proud, honestly. It's such a great, <laughs> great, great way of seeing your life and, and go, keep delving into something that you really excites you. So uh, obviously we spoke, we touched on uh, chat GPT earlier and we would, uh, I guess that's probably a challenge and maybe an opportunity in your industry. Uh, so uh, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing in your industry at the moment? Yeah, well, so straight away, everyone's on the same playing field in terms of economic situation. And I've spoken yeah. to almost every business owner and they're like, it's been a slow year. And there's only been like a couple of that actually we've had a really great year. Yeah. Um, and so you have that and then you add on ChatGPT, which is all about writing content. And, you know, something I charge people 500 bucks for, they're like, I can do that for free now and get something pretty good. And there was a moment there where I'm like, oh, oh crap, what, what does this mean? Uh, do I just focus on the training and just, you know, dump the writing side or, or what do I do? And then I was speaking to people and all these people intrigued or scared about ChatGPT. And I thought, well, all right. There's, I looked on on um, like Amazon, there's not a lot of books on it yet because it's only been around for like, what, seven months um, and only really been around, around for like four months. And so um, there's not a lot of stuff out there because I went looking for some books to read. Mm. Um, one was very, very poorly written and I'm like, geez, I could just, <laughs> 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 if I write something just slightly better than that, which I know I would, it'd be fine. Um, but there's not a lot of books out there written by copywriters. I think there was mm -hmm. any by actual copywriter. It's all from like IT geeks and things. So I thought if I can use my past knowledge as a copywriter, because understanding tone of voice, audience, understanding mm -hmm. uh, good structure, what makes really good engaging content. And I use that and apply that to ChatGPT. I can educate people on how to use it effectively and be more like a, a coach, chat yeah, yeah. coach and trainer, um, right. help with writing prompts, whether I introduce a subscription, which I've thought about, um, and also I'll write my own book too. Mm -hmm. I thought this is a great, really great opportunity because some will continue playing with this yeah. uh, and you know, eventually when it is paid, like they'll continue. And there'll be some like, oh, you know what? I didn't realize how much effort had to go into it. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Um, and they go, look, can you just write it for me? Mm. So I'm taking the opportunity to build my my brand as a copywriter, copywriting agency and on trainer. And then I'm just going to see where this goes. Like I, I, it could just all die out within six months and either have those two camps, chat to be users don't need me at all. And those who, you know, bigger clients never going to use it, want proper, you know, proper original content. And maybe that's where things will go. I don't know, but I'm going to really jump on it now. And I've already got, as I mentioned to you earlier, I'm doing a webinar in a week's time that I've already got a decent amount of people signed up, probably 50%, as you know, from event <laughs> industry and, and, and free stuff. Exactly. Can't probably show up, yeah. but I have their contact. So then be in touch of help you with content, editing, coaching, whatever it is. So it's a real opportunity. Yes, opportunity and threat. And I figured I could just seize a threat and just tell everyone, don't use that, use me, or I embrace it and just see how we can work together. Yeah, what a way to pivot again, uh, Leanne. Seriously, it's um, so good to see businesses like business owners like yourself thinking this way because um, right now, you know, one of the biggest things that we talk, we're talking about at Growth Gen is uh, being more adaptable, you know, uh, pivoting when required really has uh, the technology world really has disrupted a lot of things uh, in the past 10 years. Uh, I will say this about ChatGPT. When MySpace came out, the excitement that I had, when my, Facebook came out, when uh, uh, the excitement that I had, ChatGPT has that e excitement. And I think it's going to be sticking around for a long time. So if if a product or a service, you know, has that kind of excitement, I mean, so you doing this move ha can't be wrong. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's how I figured. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping anyway. So yeah. I, yeah, there's a I, lot I, of interest. <laughs> yeah, look, the only way that I see it, uh, do you know what I mean, sort of uh, moving away is if an upgraded chat GPT comes around. Do you know what I mean? And and 
uh, I think they're already ahead of the curve. Everyone's going to start uh, using it. I mean, that's the kind of excitement that it has. Um, but more importantly, for a user like myself who doesn't do much in terms of uh, technology or that space or or the writing space, it's so exciting. Um, I, I definitely love everything about it. So uh, I think you're definitely on the right path, uh, which is uh, so exciting because this is you stepping up to it. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting how AI is going to really shift things. I mean, it really ha it really is starting already, and <laughs> you can uh, there's essentially a frenzy out there uh, for for every industry to to jump on this tech. Uh, like with any tech, uh, the first year or two is always complicated, always sometimes messy, sometimes doesn't work it when the way you want it, but it will only get better. You see, this is the thing. So if it's only going to get better, then you're definitely going to be on the right uh, path to sort of capture that moment. I guess, you know, that cross section that we entrepreneurs always think about, you know, the balance of uh, the work and the and the passion coming together, uh, that's where you want to be, which is uh, amazing. So in saying that, um, uh, Leanne, uh, what, what's your focus then in the next two years? Uh, do you have um, a, a plan, I guess, because uh, you just said that you've had to rethink things completely when you when you saw chat GPT. So you must have taken up a bit of time just to think about think things through. What, what's what's uh, what's the next two years look like? Uh, well, I'm definitely going to go with the flow and see. I mean, it's probably too early to tell exactly what the market's going to do with it um, mm. and how cause people keep saying, oh, don't worry, the enthusiasm will die down and they'll still come back to you. It may not, you know. <laughs> it could just become just like Google it. It'd be like, I'll chatty it or whatever people <laughs> start to say, <laughs> or GPT it or G it yeah. or I know what. But, you know, it'll just become here to stay. So, I think, look, people are still, it's always going to come back to understanding the whole structure of it and all of that. I think very well my my business could yet yeah, become more editing, probably even more so training. Uh, I would love to get on stage at conferences and things like that. I'll you know, have my book, write some more books around, you know, this space as things evolve. Um, I've always loved futuristic stuff. So I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, it's kind of fun <laughs> for me to learn about. Um, I think that's it, it may be a whole lot less copywriting, a lot more training. Mm. And I've always already got um visions to like become like a TAFE teacher next year to do some marketing training and you know, just oh, continually. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I found out recently just there's a high demand for marketing teachers at TAFE and stuff. So it could have been leading to universities, mm. excellent for corporate, um, in-house training. There's I, I kind of have a feeling the training space is really going to take off um, of how to use this effectively from a copyright perspective who gets content. Uh, editing probably to an extent. There'll still be some bigger corporates that just want a yeah, well-written copy, like I mentioned earlier. Mm. So that probably will, that will still continue. Just like, you know, flight, you know, um, for flights and stuff, people still often want to go to a person, even though you can technically do it online. And there's other things like that as well, like even online shopping for groceries, you can do it online, but people still prefer to go in face to face. So there'll still be those who want the human copywriter, as I'm calling mm -hmm. myself. Um, and then other people, they'll just benefit from the training. So we'll just I don't want to lock any, you know, strong business plans in place because this is a very evolving space. Yeah. But I have a feeling because I'm very, you know, comfortable on stage. I've recently become a trivia host, get more comfortable on the microphone in front of 200 people on a, you know. Now you're a trivia host too now. That's a trivia host too, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it. it's, um, and now it's all just very strategic going, I want to get more experience of, of yeah. ad hoc, off the cuff, talking, entertaining yeah. people. And I think I'm doing an okay job at it so far. So that's where I feel like I'll be I'll be going more more speaking bigger stages, um, just be whole content thing, bringing humanity back to content, yeah, um, and yeah, hopefully writing more books. So yeah, fantastic. Well, look, I I will say that the training and education space is a huge space and uh, one that has a lot of opportunities, especially if you want to talk about, um, you know, new technologies like Chat GPT. Uh, my wife works in the education space and it's a massive industry, you know, uh, and, you know, so much so that TAFE and some of the government institutions now 
are almost struggling to, you know what I mean, to recruit because there's so... Oh, yeah. it's, it's fee-free so at the moment. Of... The training and assessment certificate, I found it's fee-free. So it's like five yeah. grand just wiped off. Yeah, so well, that's why I'm going to do that semester two this year because I thought, yeah. well, it's free and that will then be a great platform and great for my, you know, CV to say I've done that. So yeah. yeah, get onto it, everyone, if you want to be yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Love, love it. No, that's amazing. Oh, good. So uh, Leanne, obviously you've been a member just uh, with us for almost uh, or just over six months now, and we're super excited to have you on board. You've been amazing uh, with your contribution. Tell us, why did you join Gro Growth Gym first? Uh, so for me, I don't have a one-on-one -on -one business coach. Uh, I, I've had a couple in the past and unfortunately I had bad experiences. So I didn't want to reinvest in that whole gamble again, but this was a much more affordable arrangement. And as in a group, I do love bouncing ideas around everyone, you know, every month. And there's other little um, side things that, you know, have been added like accountability on Mondays, which unfortunately I haven't been able to get to last two, but they've been great going, all right. Cause that's often what I would just want a business coach to help me with. I have the ideas. I know what needs to be done. I just need it to be done. So just having that accountability, which is literally like, you know, what, 20 minutes of my week, that session, it just keeps me on track. So that's yeah. been great. And also, you know, I've been to one or two of the growth gen events and who I've connected with, uh, those have been really um, powerful as well. So yeah, if you're looking for something that's cost-effective, you want that business coach but can't quite afford that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, thousands of dollars a month, then this is a really great option. And yeah, you've got the networking, which I obviously love, all tied in with it as well and workshops and things too. So yeah, yeah I've enjoyed it. Awesome. Well, we're super glad that you've joined our group because, uh, uh, you know, the input that you're bringing, your business is awesome. The way that you've pivoted already is just incredible. So we really appreciate all your support and uh thank you uh, and i'm glad we're giving you that support more importantly um <laughs> so uh, uh i guess um uh what uh as you know at growth gen we talk about business and life so what do you do to take some time off for yourself uh, leanne uh yeah so i do get up extra early in the morning so i've got that time to myself before the rest of the house wakes up uh <laughs> so you know my alarm goes off yeah 5 30 um six o'clock and I either, yeah, go to the gym or I'm getting into running. I've got plans to run my first half marathon in September. Awesome. Uh, so I am, you know, going, going for a run. And I was not a runner as a kid. I was one that came last. So <laughs> to just even go to the, the gym or I ran recently a Mother's Day Classic and overtake people is this massive empowering moment. <laughs> um, I'm That's now awesome. a runner, whereas my child self would be like, yeah, right um so that's a little thing that I, yeah for my fitness I I put a lot of emphasis on it while I was pregnant uh because yeah. I was wow. like I need to stay healthy and then it, it kind of you know paid when you call it petered off a little bit um when I did have the kids thinking oh, I can't go early I'm an early morning person so mm. guys, I can't do it later in the day I was like, oh what if I'm yeah what if I'm out and they need me um you know dad's home but what if they need me and I kind of create that little barrier to doing it. And yeah. now that they're, they're nine and six, it's a lot easier. They understand, oh, mummy's probably gone for a run if I can't find her. Um, and it's, yeah, it just was a lot easier. Um, and I guess it's just as well, taking that time out for me, not feeling guilty having, um, you know, going out to out with friends or going to get my nails done or my hair mm -hmm. done going just guilt-free going no I need to do this and um just for my own yeah sanity yeah. so yeah that's all very important you know it's um it's funny when we become parents we feel like that we need to conform to this uh way that society has put a painted a picture but really it's 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 far from that because it really if we start doing that it becomes uh, like we we don't we don't become happy and that will reflect back on our kids on everything that we do so for me uh, you know my wife and I yeah I've got a beautiful wife who really looks after the kids so well I definitely <laughs> give her the full props on that uh, I definitely help out don't get me wrong but but uh, it's it's definitely the uh, the wife but I always try and 
remind her to go to go get her nails done or uh, go for a massage or any of those things because um uh, and go out with her friends more importantly because that that part is so important um and and we don't have to be like that I mean, who created these rules? I, I just wanted to talk to the person that created <laughs> this rule of, oh, you have to be a parent. You have to look after your kids. We are looking after our kids. We're not. I mean, um, my kids see, yeah. like, they see that I'm doing exercise. I see that I'm setting myself as new challenges. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, mommy's on a podcast. You know, it's, um, I'm kind of thinking, you know, the whole, people are like, oh, no, I'm sacrificing, you know, time with the kids or whatever. I, I feel like I'm actually teaching them because, you know, these days more and more kids and teens are turning into entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, you know, it's probably like an explosion of small business owners, mm. uh, especially from the youth. So if they see me doing it, you know, it just kind of opens up their world of what they could do. I mean, my nine year old keeps talking about starting a YouTube channel, which I'm like, hard <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you can't say uh, that. You're in YouTube already. Leah. Well, it's different. I'm like, you're nine. <laughs> um but you know she's already uh, apparently she wants to join my business one day she likes writing too That's awesome. I'm like cool so I feel like I'm it's more about setting an example as a role model and I just cut just have that conversation I've always had mature conversations with them from a young age yeah. mommy's awesome. doing this because she's getting doing this get work which pays for this and then they just see the context of it all um, and oh mommy's going to this work networking event because I'm going to meet people who could help grow the business which means you get to do i get to buy you more things um like, um but yeah <laughs> just you know you just say mommy's not i used to feel that um guilt as i was going out and I'm like oh sorry i'll be back soon and now i'm just like no nah, you'll be right you're mm. good i'll be back i'll see you in the morning and out i go so yeah, I love it. Uh, it's definitely should be like that. Having those conversations and being uh, honest and uh, uh, honest and up, uh, open with them, super important. Uh, so um, I love what you're doing. It's uh, fantastic. So uh, tell me another. Uh, tell me something that you've written down on your bucket list. <laughs> I have a long list of things that I because I do. Yeah, as I mentioned, I, I like doing something different every year. Um, something actually this this came up in a conversation the other day. I've always wanted to learn Auslan, like Australian Sign Language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I talk a lot with my hands anyway, and I thought it'd be great <laughs> if I actually learned how to use them effectively and then yeah. talk and sign. And this would obviously help them in the future if I do continue with training, then yeah. I won't have to have interpreters. So I, it could very well be something that I do when the kids are a little bit older because you know I'll have to go to extra classes awesome. and things. Yeah. But, something i've always thought about learning that's amazing that's so good leanne what a uh, fantastic uh, conversation this was really really appreciate your time and okay. for being a part of our uh growth gen community um so tell everyone uh, where they can find you uh today sure we can find the business right time marketing is that a right for the pen um time marketing uh find me on instagram leanne shelton 247 my birthday is 24th of July, 24-7. Very cool. <laughs> um, and on LinkedIn, I'm definitely hanging out there a fair bit. So connect and follow. I'm, I'm very engaged in that space. So um, yeah. yeah, definitely send me a connection request. Let's chat. Can line up a 15-minute virtual tea. And yeah, see if we can collaborate in any way. Awesome. Uh, well, Leanne, thank you so much. On behalf of myself and the team at Growth Gen, uh, such a good insightful session. Really enjoyed chatting to you. Uh, can't wait to see how you go in the next two years. Uh, so much happening actually in your space now that, uh, yeah, now that know. who knows where I'll be in two years. Yeah, like, who knows? Yeah, months time, a lot happens in my world. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> two months, two years. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, look I, I'm excited because uh, I could definitely see um, uh, the opportunities for you as well. So I'm, um, I'm super excited. But um, yeah, so for everyone that's joined us, thank you. Uh, as you know, GrowthGen is the community. GrowthGen.com.au is the uh, website. Uh, come visit us, come join our community if you want to, and uh, be a part of this uh, uh, this community that not only talks about business, but also life. Uh, that's why, that's how we support you all the way throughout that journey. Have a great day, everyone.